<sighs> this is going to be tough. But it's got to be done. It's long overdue. All right, officially Team Android of the week. Now, all we gotta do is tell IG we're Team Android for the week. Curious to see what they have to say. I'm not gonna be able to airdrop anymore, so. I guess I just have to upload it to my G Drive. Documents, S24 Ultra Assets. Five. All right, upload to IG. All right, let's do a little poll. Wow, that's definitely different. What would you like to learn about this phone as an iPhone user? That looks good. All right, let's see what the people have to say. What's good everyone, Jossie here, and I'm really excited about today's video because I've been using the Samsung, where is it at? Where is it even at? The Samsung S24 Ultra, basically since it came out. And I've actually really enjoyed using this phone. I haven't been consistently using it, which is why I wanted to make this video so I can fairly compare to the iPhone 15 Pro and actually see if someone like myself, who's an Apple fanboy, could switch to the Samsung S24 Ultra. There have already been a few things that I already noticed that I really enjoy about this phone. One, I like the size. I actually don't mind the squared edges. It's extremely bright. I've noticed that when I'm on plane rides, specifically like with Delta Airlines, my connection to Wi-Fi is way stronger than it is with the iPhone 15 Pro. It's a major difference. Like the 15 Pro can't connect to Wi-Fi. Meanwhile, on the S24 Ultra, I'm watching YouTube videos in 1080p. So I did a Google Pixel 8 Pro fanboy video and that video did really well, got a tons of engagement, questions, advice. So I'll be looking for the same thing in this video. For those of you all who are Android users, especially Samsung Avid users, please give me some advice on like different tips and tricks and hacks for this phone to make my experience even better. And for those of you all who've switched from iPhone to Samsung, I'd love to know your experience. So in the Pixel A Pro video, I didn't fully switch. I did buy the phone which is like the minimum thing to do. And I set up a phone plan. So since then I have made Android phones my second phone. Like my almost like productivity, like I wanna be focused and getting work done phone. But in this video, I'll be using this phone for a week and taking you all through my daily routines using the Samsung S24 Ultra. And I'll tell you about some of the highlights I have with the phone. I just feel like this is the best way for me to gauge whether or not this would be a phone I could see myself switching to and even giving some advice on if you should switch to this phone. And I don't want to bore you all with specs. I think it's a lot more fun to see the devices in a real world setting and how your average consumer will probably use it. Okay, it's Tuesday at 2.27 p.m. I'm at 69% battery. I started the day off at 80% because I do have the phone's battery settings set to maximum battery protection. So basically it stops charging once it reaches 80%. This will help prevent the reduction of like the battery lifespan. All right, so the place that I got my bike shop has the accessories that I'm looking for, which is universal adapter plate, so I can use my S24 Ultra for navigation when biking with my Super 73. I also wanted to pick up the plug and play turn signal kit for Super 73 by Illuminate. They just look so sick. Like if you look at these pictures, I'm like, I have to add these to the bike. Look at how dope that looks. And it's also functional, which validates a purchase because I'm gonna be biking a lot more now that it's spring and summer's right around the corner. And when you're visible, you're just more safe. <laughs> Before I go, I need to actually install Slack because I do not like leaving the house without having access to my work Gmail or my work Slack. Even if I'm only going for like 20 minutes to a, a coffee shop.
for the next probably few hours and the first real world test that we could do is testing out the hotspot and seeing how effective it is while working remotely using my mobile hotspot from my Samsung S24 Ultra for my work laptop. Samsung S24 Ultra was pretty seamless. The browsing experience was as expected. There was one application that I was trying to use that was having a hard time loading, but after a few refreshes, it ended up loading properly. So really no complaints there. So the display is super bright. That's one thing I've noticed. I mean, I've been using it for months, but this is my first time solely using it to navigate around New York on an extremely bright day with no clouds in the sky. And I haven't even needed to switch to the dark theme. So even with the default light theme, it's still bright enough. I've had no issues viewing the maps or navigating through the city. Samsung store because the S24 Ultra from what I hear is more prone to having a cracked screen and I'm not trying to pay hundreds of dollars to fix this screen. I also need a case so I can attach that Peak Design Universal mount. So it's the end of the day. It's time for a battery check-in for the S24 Ultra. I started using it around like 11.30 a.m. So it's been about 11 hours. 7%. I don't know if you all can see that. That's pretty good. When I got home, I was watching the Pelicans Lakers game on YouTube TV. When I got home, I think it was around like 20% of battery, maybe 25%. But it's done an excellent job with battery life. So it's lasted all day. And we started at 80% around like 11 a.m. in the morning. Day two of using the S24 Ultra. So I needed to add my credit cards for Google Pay, especially on days like today where I'm gonna be using the train. So I'm gonna be seeing how effective it is using tap to pay with the S24 Ultra. In New York City, we move quick. We got no time to wait for anybody. So when you're going through the turnstiles, there's so many times where I need my tap to pay to work as quickly as possible so I don't miss a train and so I don't bug the people behind me so they can get to where they gotta get to. So I'm about to head to a WeWork in Midtown to meet one of my coworkers. This is supposed to be one of the best, if not the best, we work in New York City. It's got a rooftop. Hopefully the rain holds off at least for three or four hours while we're at the co-working space. In terms of the fit, this is actually one of my favorite like types of outfits where I have trousers and a hoodie. I got this hoodie from Goo and uh, I'm pretty sure they still sell this exact <laughs> silhouette. It's not the best hoodie in the world, but it's pretty affordable and it comes with a lot of the details that more expensive sweatshirts come with. So uh, update on a wallet. In my last video, I went to the Celine store and I spent way too much money on this wallet. That definitely wasn't my style. There was a comment where someone said that they didn't think it was my style because I don't typically go for designer and then also the gold zippers just clashes with the silver that I wear and they were 100% right. So I ended up getting this wallet from APC. This wallet is perfect because it still has the traditional silhouette of a wallet. It has this really cool money clip holder in the center of the wallet, but it also has this pocket, which is the main thing I was looking for that allows me to store an air tag or if I don't want to use the money clip holder for cash. <laughs> Thank you. 
pay definitely didn't work as planned. I think it was too dark inside the train station for it to scan my face to unlock. So I had to unlock it with my fingerprint, which was a mess because I was also holding a camera. iPhone's definitely better when it comes to tap to pay and obviously like the facial scanning technology is much better with the iPhone 15 Pro compared to the S24 Ultra. Also know that you all want more of a practical test, especially from the community posts. I think a lot of you already know what the specs are and you know what the features are. So it's important that I talk about what I actually use in my overall experience. And I was underground in the train for like 20, 25 minutes max. And about 90% of the time I had service and I was able to listen to apartment life, DJ and set, a couple DJ sets, as a matter of fact, without really any issues at all. been about it's almost been 12 hours since I first started using the S24 Ultra this morning and we're at 17 percent 17 percent battery left honestly I did get a little nervous that the phone was gonna die I've been using it practically all day I don't know why but I feel like my battery life yesterday was better than my battery life today and maybe that's just because I spent more time outside data roaming and whatnot now it's 7:30. I gotta meet one of my homies downstairs and we're gonna take the train to our 7v7 football game. Just feels like this day is never in. <laughs> So today is day four of using the S24 Ultra. Yesterday I didn't film, the weather was trash. So it really just didn't feel like any point in filming because I really only use the phone in the house and I spent most of my time on my computer at my desk. I did take some pictures last night though. to test out the 12 megapixel camera in lower light settings and the pictures came out really good. Also took a few pictures during daylight. And one thing I have noticed about the S24 Ultra is that the pictures are so high resolution. And in the right lighting, I do think that the S24 Ultra pictures can compete with the iPhone 15 Pro pictures. So the wallet case is not the most practical case because I noticed that if I only have one hand free and I'm trying to take a picture, if I flip the fold to the back, and I try to take a picture in like wide angle. As you can see, the case is covering part of the lens, which isn't ideal. However, when my hands are free, there's something so like classy about using the phone this way. It just feels so like private. And then the display is so large. It almost gives you like a tablet kind of feel. Okay, so it's 11.30 AM. The battery is at 79%. I just got done charging it. I started charging it around, I think 10.30, 10 20 a.m and it was on i think 11 or 12 percent because i hadn't charged it since yesterday morning standby battery life is really powerful i remember when i took this phone to san francisco and it wasn't my main driver and i wasn't using it that often i went like three days without needing to charge this phone so i definitely recommend picking up this 20 watt dual port anchor usb charger that not only has connection for usb type c but usb type a as well i just had to recommend this product to you because for some reason i don't have any blocks it's like the moment apple and samsung and all these different phone companies stop providing blocks in the phone packaging i just lose them i don't know why open up slide 
So one thing that I was curious about is how my content looks on social media and how it performs. I've noticed that there hasn't been a drop off in terms of engagement. I will say that's because of most of my social media points with the S24 Ultra have been pictures on IG stories. I will say though, the video mode, especially ultra wide camera, it doesn't look great. <laughs> Someone said that the footage looked like iPhone <laughs> ultra wide angle footage from five years ago. I've noticed that consuming content on Instagram feels very familiar. Just scrolling and interacting with IG feels more natural. I'll say posting still feels a little gimmicky. Consuming content feels pretty normal. TikTok, on the other hand, is doesn't feel as natural and as seamless as the, my iPhone experience. I've even experienced that bug where, where the videos are glitchy and I've never experienced that before on iPhone. Other than that, the IG timeline looks great. I haven't really looked at content on Twitter. I say don't get on Twitter. The S24 Ultra shines when it comes to YouTube. I love consuming content on YouTube. And I think it's just because of the size of the display. I actually don't mind the squared edges. It makes experience feel like it's a tablet. And I enjoy that, I enjoy it a lot. Stuff <laughs> I've been experiencing. I'm trying to log into the Nike app. I log into the Nike app all the time on my iPhone. I can't even, the login page won't even load. You know, I'm really getting used to this one monitor setup. I like that I can have a bunch of accessories and my desk doesn't look too cluttered because I think this is only a 60 inch wide desk anyways. But even though the desk is pretty messy, it doesn't feel overwhelming. I wish I had the same delusion that I do when I was two and didn't think that I could ruin anything at all. I could never fall. I wish I had that same conviction. Convinced I never need a fixin' And I can really know her business Where did she go? Yeah, she thought she could do anything Thought she could get anywhere Confident she's number one And if not, then everybody's wrong Used to be calm, now I can't remember How I used to do it that I was a member of Confidence Club, cause that don't last forever all right, so this is a dual video mode test. We just came from the movies. We just saw a Civil War. What do you rank it? Five out of ten. Five out of ten. You're a tough grader. <laughs> I give it six-ish because there was pretty good action scenes. And I like the photography, journalists, journalists. I don't know the exact name of the job title, but I like their perspective. But this is the dual video mode. And I just feel like this is so immersive. I hope that Apple brings this feature to their cameras soon because this is so much better than needing to film B-roll and then do voiceover. Now I could just do both simultaneously and it just feels like you're walking here with me. Day five of using the S24 Ultra as my main driver. It's a beautiful day here in New York. So I'm gonna go out and take some pictures with the S24 Ultra using the 12, 50, and 100 megapixel camera. I do think that the photo mode is its best feature when it comes to the camera outside of obviously zoom. Zooming to 20 and 100X, I don't think that footage is usable, but it can be a nice feature. Just not sure how often you'll actually use it, especially since the footage just falls apart once you get to like beyond 5X. It's currently 5.45 p.m. at 53% left the battery, started the day off at 80%. So after five days of using this phone, and I'll talk more about if you should switch from iPhone to Samsung, or if this is actually the best Android phone to pivot from iPhone to, but I have noticed that this phone does an excellent job when it comes to taking pictures of landscapes and architecture. I don't necessarily always like the way my skin tone looks when I take pictures with this phone. Photos sometimes look a bit oversaturated, over contrast, like too much contrast, and then sometimes even a bit overexposed. But when it comes to architecture or landscape, I think this is an excellent choice.
so here are my official thoughts on what my experience has been like switching from the iPhone 15 Pro to the Samsung S24 Ultra as a very long term iPhone Apple fanboy user, I think as long as like 13 years. I'm pretty sure I got my first iPhone when I was a freshman in high school. The design of the S24 Ultra feels more futuristic and exciting to use than my iPhone 15 Pro. When placing them side by side, the S24 Ultra's 6.8 inch practically bezel-less display is so much more appealing. The anti-reflective coating, adaptive brightness, and color tones that measure ambient lighting make the display easy to look at for long periods of time. When I would pick up the S24 Ultra and let's say I was just doing something like, you know, a simple Google search or maybe doing some online shopping, I was constantly excited about the browsing experience experience. Watching content on this display is top tier and I definitely don't think you have to get used to this experience. If anything, the viewing experience coming from the S24 Ultra to the iPhone 15 Pro will take some getting used to. I personally used to think that the S Pen was a nerdy Android feature that I'd never used, but boy was I wrong. For one, I've really enjoyed using the S Pen for journal entries when I would do my workouts, keeping track of my reps, sets, and how much weight I was lifting. I didn't post a ton of content using the S24 Ultra on Instagram, mostly used it to take pictures to post on Instagram stories. I personally like the squared edges. It isn't the most ergonomic in hand, or natural feeling, but it's easier for it to stand up on its own and it makes it look really modern and futuristic. And not to mention one of the most underrated features, especially since this phone is so large and it can take quite a bit of hand gymnastics to close out all your apps, but instead you could just use the close all button. So obviously there was some getting used to when switching from an iPhone 15 Pro to the S24 Ultra. I was much less efficient when sending emails, text messages, and having quite a few spelling and corrections. I also noticed that I had to swipe up from the middle in order to access my apps, opposed to swiping down from the middle. So I did inform a few of my group chats that I was switching to an Android phone and and I noticed that I was just less active when it came to my group chats. I think a big part of it is because I felt like I was missing out on all of those amazing iMessage features. Not to forget, there were a few bugs that definitely turned me off when using the S24 Ultra. So Gmail crashed on me when I was trying to send an important email, which has never happened to me on iPhone. I was scrolling through my photos. One of my videos was green for some reason. It was just one video in the grid, doesn't make any sense to me. I noticed that Gmail closes when I send an email. I also didn't like that I had to click on the top right corner of a draft, the little pin emoji in order to click into the draft so I could send a message. I just find that a bit cumbersome. When I opened TikTok, there also was this weird like glitchy video, which I've also never experienced on iPhone. And some gestures don't work using social media, like for example, swiping to leave or delete spam messages in Instagram. Last but not least, the video quality was just not good enough for me to feel confident about posting on social media. If I was someone trying to be like a content creator, I'd feel like feel like I'd have to work harder than my iPhone users in order to make high quality or engaging content. Now I know I didn't make a ton of adjustments and customizations when it comes to the S24 Ultra. This is my first week using it and I wanted to I wanted to really emulate an experience that your average user would have who's just trying to use a phone Phone right out of the box, which is how iPhone users typically interact with their phones. We don't need to make a ton of customizations. Apple kind of lays out everything out there for us and makes it really easy and intuitive for us to use. So that wraps up my experience of switching to the S24 Ultra from the iPhone 15 Pro. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Comment down below S24 Ultra if you wanna see a more long-term comprehensive review. I actually really did enjoy using this phone and would love to make more content if that's something that interests you guys. As always, thank you guys for watching this video. I'll see you all soon. Peace.